Hey everyone and welcome back to Out of Here Baseball. In this video, we'll be ranking the 2019 MLB managers by how good they were as players. To become an MLB manager, you have to understand the game from a player's perspective, and the best way to do that is to be a player at a highly competitive level. Almost all of the current MLB managers reached the majors as players, but some were more successful than others. I thought it would be a fun idea to see just how good each manager was as a player and rank them based on how well they played. We'll be moving pretty quickly as we'll touch on all 30 managers in this video, so let's get started with our list of MLB managers ranked by playing career. At number 30 we have Mike Schilt of the St. Louis Cardinals. Schilt is the only manager on this list not to have played baseball professionally, last playing in college at UNC Asheville. At number 29 is Joe Madden of the Cubs. Madden never advanced past single A, playing as a catcher for the Angels organization. Number 28 is Brandon Hyde of the Orioles. Hyde was also a minor league catcher, reaching triple A for the White Sox organization before going to play independent ball for one year. At number 27 is Brian Snicker of the Braves. Snicker was another minor league catcher, also reaching triple A for the Braves organization. And if you haven't noticed the trend yet, a lot of the managers on this list were catchers when they played. At number 26, we have our first major league player in Charlie Montoyo of the Blue Jays. Montoyo had just five career MLB at bats, but he had two hits and three RBI in that time. Number 25 on our list is Mickey Calloway of the Mets. Calloway is one of two pitchers on this list, but wasn't the most successful on the mound, posting a 627 ERA and 130 career innings. Number 24 is Andy Green of the Padres. Green played in 140 games across four seasons, primarily with the D-backs. He was a light-hitting infielder who had two career home runs. At number 23 is Kevin Cash of the Rays. Cash was a backup catcher, mostly remembered for his time with the Blue Jays. His career wins above replacement was negative 3.1, and if you're unfamiliar with wins above replacement, a negative value means a player is worse than a theoretical replacement player. In other words, a random minor league player may have been a better option. Next at 22 is Ned Yost of the Royals. Yost was a backup catcher for Milwaukee in his playing days, and like Cash, had a negative wins above replacement. And in case you were wondering, numbers 25 up to 19 on this list had negative career values. Moving on to number 21 is Rick Renteria of the White Sox. Renteria was a light hitting infielder and pinch hitter, best known for being with the Marlins in their debut season in 1993. He had 13 extra base hits and 263 at bats that season. At number 20 is Torrey Lovello of the Diamondbacks. Lovello was also a light hitting infielder, but ranks above Renneria due to his best season being a little bit better. In 1993 with the Angels, he had 20 doubles and 6 homers and 367 at bats. Number 19 is Terry Francona of the Indians. Francona was a Golden Spikes winner in college and stuck around in the bigs for 10 seasons primarily with the Expos. He was never able to hit for much power in the majors, hitting just 16 home runs while primarily playing first base. Number 18 on our list is AJ Hinch of the Astros. Hinch was a backup catcher with Oakland and Kansas City, providing decent enough offense and defense and finished with a career wins above replacement of exactly zero. At number 17, we have Ron Gardenhire of the Twins. Gardenhire was a shortstop for the Mets in the 80s, hitting just four career home runs, but provided above average defense. He only appeared in 100 games in the season once. At number 16 is Chris Woodward of the Rangers. Woodward was a middle infielder who played for 12 years in the bigs, seven of which were with the Blue Jays. He had his best year in 2002 when he hit 13 home runs as a shortstop and just 312 at bats. At the halfway point in 15th is Bruce Bochy of the Giants. Bochy is another backup catcher on this list and played for San Diego and Houston over nine big league seasons. While he only played around 50 games a year, he played good defense with above average power for a catcher. At number 14 is Clint Hurdle of the Pirates. Hurdle was a top prospect with the Royals, debuting at age 20 in 1977. He had a couple decent years with the team but never lived up to the hype and after he was traded from the Royals at age 24, he would never play in more than 100 games in a season again. Number 13 is Bob Melvin of the Athletics. Melvin received decent playing time in his 10 year career, but was always viewed as more of a backup catcher than a starter. He was known for his strong defense and even hit 11 home runs in 1987. 
At number 12 is Scott Service of the Mariners. Service is another catcher, but he held down a starting role with the Cubs in the late 90s. In 820 career games, he hit 63 home runs and was viewed as an above average defender. Number 11 is Alex Cora of the Red Sox. Cora was a strong defender who made his name as a starting infielder for the Dodgers in the early 2000s. He would go on to serve in more of a backup utility role as he got older and would win the 2007 World Series with the Red Sox. Into the top 10 now and we have Gabe Kapler of the Phillies. It was a tough call between Kapler and Cora, but Kapler gets into the top 10 thanks to his power and speed combination that made him stand out early in his career. He would become more of a fourth outfielder over time and won the 2004 World Series with the Red Sox. In ninth is Rocco Baldelli of the Twins. Baldelli looked like a star in the making when he came up with the Rays in 2003. He reached double digits in homers and steals in each of his first three seasons, but injuries and a rare metabolic disorder that caused fatigue and more injury ended his career before he turned 30. At number 8 is Dave Roberts of the Dodgers. Roberts didn't become a big league regular until he was in his 30s, but still managed to steal over 200 career bases. Most will remember him for stealing second against Mariano Rivera in the 2004 ALCS and one of the most important plays in Red Sox history. At number 7 we have Dave Martinez of the Nationals. Martinez played for 16 seasons and had 1,599 career hits, playing primarily in center and right field. He played for 9 different teams, but was always a decent hitter and ranks high on this list due to his longevity. In 6th is David Bell of the Reds. Bell was a strong defensive third baseman who was also a fair bet for 50 extra base hits a season in his prime. He was a part of the 116 win 2001 Seattle Mariners and played a few years in Philadelphia as well. At number 5 is Aaron Boone of the Yankees. Boone is the first of three players on this list to have been named to an all-star team, which shows that you don't have to be a star player to be a manager. Boone had a few strong seasons with the Reds before joining the Yankees and hitting an iconic walk-off home run in Game 7 of the 2003 ALCS. At number 4 is Bud Black of the Rockies. Black is the second of two pitchers on this list and was part of the Royals' starting rotation when they won the 1985 World Series. He was mostly an average pitcher for his career, but managed to win 121 games across 15 seasons and throw over 2,000 career innings. And third is Craig Council of the Brewers. Council won two World Series in his career, the first in 1997 when he was the winning run for the Marlins, and the second in 2001 with the D-backs. His defense as a second baseman and shortstop was his most notable attribute, and while never the most powerful hitter, he drew a large number of walks and had decent speed. At number two is Brad Ausmus of the Angels. Osmus is best remembered as the Astros catcher for most of the 2000s, winning three gold gloves and garnering a reputation as a leader and someone destined for being a future manager. He also made one all-star team while with Detroit in 1999. And now at number one, it's Don Mattingly of the Marlins. There is no doubt who number one would be, as the former Yankees captain was named to six all-star teams, won nine gold gloves, won an MVP, had his number 23 retired, and is a popular candidate to one day be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Donnie Baseball is one of the few Yankees legends to never win a World Series, but we can hope that he wins a title one day. It just may not happen with the Marlins. So that concludes our countdown of current MLB managers ranked by playing career. Do you agree with this list? What current players do you think will be future managers? Leave your answer in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell icon to stay notified on all the latest out of here baseball content. Thanks for watching.